Yeah, let's talk a little bit about why I prefer KitOps material management to Blender's native asset manager. So let's first go in here and I'm gonna just go ahead and quickly add a cutter to this. A cutter is really just adding a Boolean. And this is something, by the way, also that Blender's asset manager can't do, but I'm gonna add that here and I can snap it using, you know, V for vertex, I can stick it on a corner, E for edge, and then C, center, center, center of edges, you know, F for face. So I'll just do this. What I'm gonna do next is just select this middle piece, right? And I want to add a material onto that. So I'm gonna grab this aluminum mat and I'm gonna put it right here on here. And notice it's, didn't get it. Let's see, let's try it again. I'll stick it, maybe it has to go right there didn't get it so there's no way I can drag and drop on here but I can come in here very easily and I can grab a material like this and just say add material and it's gonna get it it's gonna get that and and give it a material now the reason why you're seeing that is because that material also exists on this object if you have a target object it has the same material as the cutter it's going to display so there's there's that so that's one thing you can't drag and drop but you can you can basically add add new slots and, and do all kinds of things that way so Hey, uh, let me just interrupt real quick. I want to show you one other thing. Um, and that is, let's quickly create something. Let's just uh, add this insert here. We'll just put one there. Come over here. We'll add one here. Scale it down a little bit. And let's just uh, go and put it uh, on this axis. We have them both. What I want to do is I want to change the material of this. So again, we're going to go grab, you know, kind of a plastic, like a green. And I'll add that material. Now, we don't see it to that object, but if I look here, you'll see it's on there. And if I click on here and we add a slot and then we add the material. Now, look how easy it is to, to add materials to slots directly uh, here. And let's go grab this one, for instance, up here. Let's just do a, like, like a red, add material, go here, add slot and add material. So, you know, it's very easy to do this. And in fact, if I come in here and let's just uh, select this object and I'm gonna say convert to mesh, remove onionized wires, and I'm gonna tab in here and let's just grab this, a few of these, something like that. And I'm gonna add yet even another slot, okay? And this time we'll use like blue, assign it, there we go. So, so now we have four different materials in here. Now, if I wanna change these materials over here, right? So I can go in here and I can drag it and I can drag directly onto the actual slot that I want to change. And I have to move around and do all that. Uh, and it works, right? Uh, I can also just as easily come over here with this selected, just choose whatever slot. I want that concrete to be blue. So, you know, just say add material. There's the blue one. And come over here and, uh, you know, I'll say that this wood is going to be green, add material. So I can do it very quickly here and I don't need to move around and look at it. I just know that, that I'm just looking here because these are the materials that I want to be changing. I, I prefer that way. It's just easier. I don't have to kind of look. If I have tiny little pieces of something over here, I'm going to have to go in here and select that and drag that and get that one. Exactly. Back to our video. Let's just go ahead and convert this to a mesh, remove unused wired inserts. So now we have this. Let's look at this. We have the CW1 concrete, and this is actually the same exact material. I'm going to drag this over here onto this object. So there it is. So you can see that's there. And I'm going to shift A, and I'm going to make a me uh, uh, UV sphere. And let's move this up and shade smooth it. And I'm going to drag this concrete material over onto here, right? So notice that I've got this append reuse data model turned on. But if I look at my images, you'll see that... I've actually added uh, two different concrete, uh, three different concrete materials. So I've, you know, that concrete material, let's just look at one of these, for instance, that's a 2K, 2K image. So I'm, I'm basically loading up three 2K images. Now you can say, well, yeah, but you can go and link this. Well, you can link it, but then you can link all your objects. And when you start linking objects, you start getting into file conflicts. And it's fine if you want to do that. If that's a workflow that you feel comfortable with, I have never worked that way. I always like to have everything in my file so I can basically give it to somebody else, somewhere else, and it, it just works. I don't, they don't have to have access to all of my different, you know, asset libraries. So this is a real problem. And let's just, let's, let's just say, hey, X delete. Okay, now that we've deleted everything, I'll just go and file and I'll say clean up, recursive, and let's just get everything. So now you can see that we don't have, we have just this one concrete patchy material in here. How do we get rid of it? I think we can select it and maybe just hit this shift X, clean up. 
Yeah, so we got one. So we had to shift exit. So now that's that's gone. So now we're starting with a brand new scene. So shift A, mesh, cube. We'll put a cube in here. And let's just go into kit ops. Let's look at some of what we have here. So I've got this. Let's go ahead and grab something like this uh, r concrete rough. And we'll add that material. And there's, there's a concrete. And notice that we have one image, right? So let's go ahead and shift A, mesh. Let's do a UV sphere. Move it up shade smooth and we're going to add on top of there we're going to add another material on this one and notice that this is the exact same name and also notice that we only have one image it's checking to make sure that it's not let's say i, I change this let's go in here and we'll just change these because they're the same they're going to change and then i'll say shift a mesh let's do another cube and we're going to move that over here and let's make that one the same one now what if i do that it's just going to be the, it's going to come in as that same same color. But what if I want to use this color? Well, if you look under add material, it says control will add a unique. So I hit control. Now we have a new version of that. So, and if at any time I've got a bunch of these, right? So let's just do this. Let's just change that to that. We'll just kind of give that a, a little bit brighter and then shift D, move one over here. And then let's uh, actually, let's uh, you know give these a different color. And I hold a control key down and say add material. So now I've got all three of them, right? So I can select all of these and I can go under here and say clean duplicate materials and it's going to actually go and remove all the duplicate materials. So that's just another cool feature that KitOps has. So there's just a lot of different things. The other nice thing is that, you know, if I create a material and I want to save it directly into my library, that looks like, actually, let's just do this. New, we'll just go in here and create a very shiny orange material okay so make it metallic a roughness down something like that so there's our, our material so another thing I can do is I can just you know, take this material and I can just go down here and I can say create material insert and there it is and I can save it and I can put it anywhere I want to including in an existing k-pack this one here I'll call this one orange metal and then I'll move my camera to insert render thumbnail does that close the factory scene so now we go back to uh, here and you see there is our material which is easy to select and i can say add material and there it is and notice again that material has not it's it's a duplicate of this one so if i change one of these i'm gonna end up changing both of them so that's another neat feature i don't have to go in and open up the original thing and save it and and all of that so you know i can mark i know i can i can mark these as an asset but it, they get marked in the current file. They don't get marked in the user library. So then you have to open this up and and uh, mark them there, which is just kind of a pain in the neck. You have to paste that, cut and paste it and all that. So it's much easier. The, the workflow is, is significantly easier. So anyway, these are just a few of the reasons why I like to use KitOps as my material manager. It's, uh, it's great. Not to mention the fact that, man, there are some great, great materials uh, that come uh, with KitOps as well as uh, the, the, all these KO materials. The glasses, this is one of the best glasses, and I'm going I'm to talk about that in a, an upcoming one. But this, you know, this, this, uh, that glass is a really, really good glass. And, uh, you know, one of the nice things is that it, it, it allows tr light to transfer, transmit through it. And it works both in, as you can see, it's got a different version for EV and for cycles. And you can adjust the IR, the roughness, and some other things. So, uh, and the color glass. It's a little bit tinted green also, but that's one of the free ones that comes with kit ops. And there's also, you know, a whole cl collection of stuff that, that come, you know, in uh, the EV material system. These CW ones, man, they're just, they're amazing. I mean, got that material. Now you can look in here and Look at that texture. It's a mold tech texture. If you know anything about plastic and molding, that's one of those textures. You know, it looks just like one of those one of those textures. You know, and there's all there's other ones in here, and then we have really cool stuff like advanced dirty stuff, and that's that that is uh, amazing. You can just you know go in here and say let's see, let's grab this panels. See what happens. That gives us a, a you know it shows a little edge wear on it, and it's got some panels, and it's all adjustable in here you can go in here and there's a lot of things to adjust in fact it tells you right here user adjustments are in yellow so if you want to have different texture images you can for the panels and for the grunge you know and uh you do things like you know there's this super dirty node which you can add to anything i mean i can go in here and just select this and go in and uh let's let's uh, let's grab this super dirty 
here and we'll uh, basically we'll nothing selected just add the material yeah we'll add a group and we just want to look for the CW Super Dirty 822 right there so I'm gonna grab that I'm gonna stick it in there but that's just gonna add some dirt to it let's let's put it on uh, you know on on this one here so shift a and you see we added some dirt and we can move the scale around you know how we want it and then we can do things like adjust the uh, height so we can actually add dirt to the height area it has ambient occlusion so there's all kinds of cool things you can do with that that particular shade so all of these come with ev material system we'll talk about that at some other point but anyway thanks for watching hope that you found some value in this and uh, we'll see you online